So first of all, I will ask the history because history is the most important. So I will ask whether the refraction is stable for some time. And also I will also ask for any family history of atasia and also any history of allergy because those are the risk factor that may be associated with a high risk of post the atasia. After knowing the history, I also want to ask the job of the patient to know uh, what kind of uh, refraction out outcome we should get. And then later on, I will start the clinical examination to look for any uh, cornea scar, any cornea abnormality, and I will evaluate the lead to look at any signs of allergy. And then after that, I will do a topography to make sure that the cornea in a, are in a good condition, make sure it's in a, uh, it there's no sign of atasia. And uh, personally, I use the Sonflux uh, imaging because it can give a very good image of the anterior and posterior cornea as well as the cornea topography. And then later on, if there's suspicion, I will sometimes I will use the uh, biomechanical test to test if the cornea is in a, a, a strong or, or in a suitable uh, um, biomechanical uh, property so that we can proceed the refractive surgery. First of all, I will look at the map itself first because sometimes the data um, may be misleading. So I look at the map and also, first of all, I have to look at the quality of the screen, if the, of the scan. If the scan quality is okay, then I can trust the scan. I will look at the individual uh, maps to look for any sign of obvious uh, atasia. And then later on, I will look for the pachymetry data and the keratometry data. And then I will look at the BAD. Uh, which is the Berlin and Brussels display, it is, which is a very good display to get a summary of the cornea status. So I will look, particularly I will look at the, uh, uh, the overall D, which is an overall evaluation of the front and back of the cornea, as well as the pachymetry, fitness point, and also a special index called the ART max, which has a very high uh, uh, capacity in differentiating normal from uh, abnormal cornea. And then later on, I will do the corpus uh, examination for the patient, which evaluate the biomechanical properties of the cornea, and it will give a CBI. And then uh, the device actually can give you a, a TBI, which is a topographical uh, um, biomechanical index, which is an overall evaluation of the cornea, and I find it very useful in my daily practice on, uh, uh, of refractive surgery screening. Um, I actually, some patients may have an abnormal BAD, but a normal uh, CBI. But, uh, and also some people may have an abnormal CBI, but a normal BAD. Actually, I encounter more patients with a normal BAD, but an abnormal uh, CBI. In those patients, I, when I do the TBI, most of the time they are abnormal. So in those patients, I will uh, stop, I will try to think about if uh, they are suitable candidate for the surgery. And of course, I will read the topography again and also make sure all the scan are in good quality. And also I will suggest the patient to wait and maybe come back in uh, three months to do a re 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 evaluation. To, uh, if, for example, some patient may have eczema, they may not be a good candidate. And sometimes, sometimes they may just like uh, wear a hard contact lens before the peak operative screening. This may also affect the outcome. So therefore, I may wait for some time and then we examine the patient to see if he or she is suitable for any refractive surgeries.